At a Christmas party in Germany in the early 1970s, Sister Tony from the Fellowship Deaconry in Liberty Corner, New Jersey, approached a young pastor named Donkfried Ortloff, who had been pastoring a church in Berlin for three years. She showed him photos of the work the Lord was doing in their German congregations over in the U.S., and asked the director of the mission in Germany to send him over to help. On October 20th, 1972, Pastor Ortloff, his wife Ruth, and their one-year-old son Andy arrived at the Fellowship Deaconry in New Jersey. Once their belongings arrived on the ship from Europe, they made their way to Chicagoland to pastor a German-speaking church in Forest Park. At that time, we had various people going. We had a, a woman pastor, we had other pastors coming. At that time, Pastor uh, Schiller came. But another church in Florida knew, heard about him and he got a call to that church. And then came Pastor uh, Ortloff. Our family started uh, attending before it was actually called CFC and before it was even in Itasca. Uh, back when we were still located in a, in a two flat in Forest Park, the main floor was the church, the basement was the kids' Sunday school, and the upstairs was where Pastor Ortloff and his family lived. Shortly after arriving at the church, Sister Tony suggested that the church should combine with the German Bible study that was being held in Bensonville and find a new location where the combined groups could worship together. Pastor Ortloff and his family hosted many dinner conversations and visits to discuss the new church and after almost a year, they decided to combine to plant a new church. They started searching for a new location where they could meet together, and God provided a building in Itasca. With the help of Liberty Corner, they purchased the property and spent two weeks cleaning, repairing, and painting for several hours a day to get the new building ready. In October of 1973, they held the first church services in the new building, and Evangelical Fellowship Chapel was born. When we came to this country, we went to different churches. I thought when we have children, I want them to have a better Christian education. In other churches, we thought there wasn't enough Bible in it. And so we thought this church, even though it's small, it's still better because the young people read more with the Bible. One of my earliest memories of the church is of listening to some of our older generation, like Mr. Engelman, pray, and how often so many of them would end with the phrase, and we will be quick to give you all the glory. And I think that really sums up our older generation and how they really did want in everything to glorify God. And they were excited and thrilled to be a part of the work that he was doing in people's lives but they clearly understood that from first to last, it was the Lord's work through his Holy Spirit. Work immediately began on building a new parsonage on the four acre rural property. And on February 2nd, 1974, Pastor Ortloff and his family moved in. In these early days of the church, the Ortloffs would often host an open house with German style coffee and cakes at the new parsonage. Soon it became a habit to have one of these get togethers at least once a month at various members' houses and a strong community was formed at the Young Church. I too have good memories of this church. Every time I walk in here, I feel like I'm coming home. I'm coming here for 44 years and I had many blessings and I still do get a lot, many blessings. And it feels like we are one big family. I remember especially those summer holidays Memorial Day, 4th of July, and Labor Day. Most of us went out to Elborn. Elborn belonged with Labor Day Corner Mission. We got there, 10.30 was the service, and after that, it was lunchtime. And at two o'clock was the second service. The sisters waited for us already outside with their tea and cakes. We left with many blessings, and we were very tired. Fellowship would remain a central practice of CFC through the years, and a strong sense of family community continues at the church even now, 50 years later. 
Christina and Erwin got married and they were coming here first, Erwin Schultz. So I started coming with them and made a lot of friends here. The commitment to growth in our relationship and walk with Christ is what kept me here, along with, you know, solid Christian friendships. So Fellowship Meals started several years ago. For as long as I can remember, we've always celebrated the anniversary in October, but we've grown since then to um, just try and bring the church together and our commitment to breaking bread together and enjoying each other's company. And we've basically outgrown the basement and moved upstairs because we have so many people that enjoy it. CFC is a big family. <laughs> In 1975, two years after their arrival in the States, Pastor Dan started English services at the church. He asked God for the ability to learn English so that he could share God's word with more people, and God answered his prayers by helping him prepare his messages in English in the same amount of time it would take him to write in German. By the early 1980s, Pastor Ortloff had become fluent enough in English for the church to move to all English services. We were asked before we came, should it be in English or in German? And we thought it would be best if we do it in English. I read this story in the Bible where the Peter and the other disciples could not catch any fish. And then Jesus said, go and throw your nets on the other side of the boat. And I thought, where is the other side of our church boat? and the other side came to us is on the American side in the language of English. So we decided it should be in English. And then Peter and the disciples caught very many fish. Another feature of the young church was a thriving youth ministry. Families would come to the church with five or six children each. The older students at the church would invite their friends and a youth group started to form. Pastor Dan started to take the youth group on retreats up to Wisconsin with station wagons packed full of kids. The Lord used this time to awaken and strengthen the youth, and they came back with testimonies of God's work and led worship at the church. The youth group used to come to our house, not the group as a group, but as friends, and hang out. Sometimes we had to go in our bedroom to discuss some private things, because the house was full of young people. They were a close group, they hung together, and uh, Edda Peter actually was their leader. He was the one that arranged everything. Our daughter Ramona was the one who took care of the food, did the shopping, did the cooking. So, but they enjoyed it. They all looked forward to that retreat. And if you come back, you know how excited you are about all the things that you have experienced in the Lord and the renewals and, and all of that. So we would have Sunday, usually after that or shortly after that, we would have a sharing time for the young people of what really happened in their lives in those retreats. Back then we had a pretty good sized Sunday school and then we became a pretty good sized youth group. Uh, the church had a backyard that was a lot bigger than it is now. And it was actually big enough so that we could have two softball games going on simultaneously. Lots of good memories, lots of good memories. CFC has continued to place an emphasis on reaching out to and discipling young men and women throughout these past 50 years. It was great growing up in the youth group at CFC. Um, when I was in sixth grade, I would look up to the older people in youth group and I would hear them talk about life as a Christian in high school and how they dealt with um, people, you know, always asking them questions, always uh, pushing back against Christianity in front of them and how to not conform to the student body at school, um, which was a great tool. I kept everything that they told me, every, all the advice. And, it definitely helped me throughout high school. For youth group, we've had very strong leaders that have taken us on some retreats where we can kind of get out of uh, suburbs of Chicago, go out a little bit, uh, usually to Wisconsin, and we can dwell on the word, well, the word while having fun with our peers. So. The area around the church changed and grew quickly over the years. Devon widened from a rural two-lane street to four lanes, 
A neighborhood was built across the street, and soon after, office buildings started to pop up behind the church. I, I remember the drive from the city to Itasca was a drive through the country every Sunday morning. Uh, you know, back then, the, the, the church was just surrounded by farmland, and the drive up Thorndale, there were farms and, and horses, and, and it was pretty cool for a city kid. The Orloff family planted and watered 200 trees on the wide open property. Eventually, two acres of the property and many of the trees were sold, allowing the church to become totally debt-free. In 1987, there was a massive flood in the area around the church, filling the church basement with eight feet of water. The church community rallied together to clean up after the flood, and the first Bible that came floating by when they arrived at the church was opened to Haggai 2, 1 through 9. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. Just as many other traditions like fellowship have continued since the beginning of the church, so also has the tradition of the church family gathering together to help fix up the church building. In 1992, the church sent its first missionaries. Through the Fellowship Deaconry in New Jersey, Carl and Kathy Schultz, along with their three-year-old son, were sent to Taiwan to further God's kingdom there and they continue to faithfully serve their church there today. He finished his uh, chemical engineering and, um, and then he worked for three years and then God told him that he should be f a full-time service of, of the Lord. I asked another mission organization, how do you do it? Well, they say, start in your home church and see what they say and it was Liberty Corner, New Jersey. And they said, yes, we accept you for six years. You have to sign a contract for six years. And that is now many years ago. According to what I remember, when my dad first arrived in Taiwan, he was assisting other pastors of other Chinese churches. And then when we moved again, this time we moved to Taoyuan City, and this place, my dad actually planted the church. And yeah, he's been ministering there for well over a decade. The Chinese name of this current church he is at is called Xunyang Ji Lu Jiao Hui. If I were to translate that, it would be something along the lines of glowing light Christ church. Ever since sending Carl in the early 90s, CFC has continued its commitment to supporting the work of spreading God's kingdom throughout the world currently supporting missionaries in South Africa and Ethiopia, as well as supporting Five Stone Churches in their church planning and strengthening efforts both here and abroad. Christian Fellowship Church has a long history supporting missionaries. And I think that's in part because Pastor Ortloff and Mrs. Ortloff were missionaries themselves, coming over from Germany, not knowing the language, to help minister to German-speaking immigrants in the Chicagoland area. And as part of being missions focused, not only has CFC sent out missionaries, but they've helped prepare them to go to the missions field. There's an organization called International Teams, which I was a part of, and those preparing to go to German speaking countries would often attend CFC on Sundays and the German speaking Bible study to be able to learn the Bible in German and get to know the culture before going overseas. But I do pray that in the next 50 years and beyond, that our church would continue to support missionaries, send them out, and just have a heart for ministering to those that need the gospel, not only in our community, but around the world. Throughout the 1980s and into the 90s, Evangelical Fellowship Chapel had grown from its roots as a German congregation to become much more multi-generational multilingual, and multicultural. In 1995, the church decided to change its name after Pastor Dan learned that many people at the time were confused about the meaning of the word evangelical. And so, in order to be more clear, the name was officially changed to Christian Fellowship Church. Many of the traditions that began in the early days of the church continued as the church entered the 2000s. The Engelman family started an annual Advent celebration at their house, where they would gather and sing Christmas hymns together, a tradition that quickly outgrew the living room of their house and continues at the church to this day. We used to have by the Engelman's uh, Advent celebration 
and it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of singing in English and in German, and, and it was so crowded. Sometimes some people had to sit on the stairs because <laughs> we ran out of chairs. We have wonderful memories, you know, of celebrating. Half the church or even more were there, singing Christmas songs, singing hymns, uh, especially that one song, Ich klopfe an, Behold I knock. It's a long song. Mrs. Ingelmann would make us sing that if we didn't. So it was one of her favorites. Great memories of Mrs. Ingelmann making her Bienenstichkuchen. That's a cake. Okay. We looked forward to the Ingelmann's Christmas celebration. Around 2004, Pastor Ortloff and his family started thinking about retirement. He and Ruth had experienced other pastors holding on too long and thereby hurting their congregations, so he wanted to make sure to honor God and his congregation by stepping aside at the right time. In 2006, after having served as the founding senior pastor of Christian Fellowship Church for 33 years, the Ortloffs moved to Huntley and Pastor Dan began his retirement. He made the choice to step back fully and allow the new pastor to bond with the congregation without his interference. It was a hard decision for the church that had become a tight-knit family over the years, but Pastor Ortloff believed it was essential for the church to grow. Pastor Dan and me, we actually met when I came to the Lord, and that was in 1980. And he nurtured me along. He had a tremendous way of shepherding his flock. He would come to the house and ask if there's anything that I need to know, if there's anything we need, if there's any questions that I would have. And then we would go through the Bible little by little. So he would have some kind of a Bible study and then ask what that would mean to my life from here forth, since I wasn't a believer. In that respect, he was a tremendous mentor. He was a good shepherd, caring for all of us. He had the patience of a saint, we always said at Bible study, when everybody disagreed with him. And uh, it was sometimes chaos. He just calmed down and that was it. So he was, in that respect, a good, good pastor, a good Bible teacher. But he was a true believer, not only in word, but also in deed. And you could tell that. I started attending CFC just before I got married in 1992. And I was happy in my own home church and it was a struggle for me to attend a new church. However, I was welcomed with open arms uh, by Pastor Dan and Ruth and his family. And uh, we appreciate the time he spent with us as a young couples group uh, providing uh, a place for us to learn about similar some of the marital problems young couples have and it was such an invaluable experience and uh, we really appreciate it we appreciate everything cfc has done to in the development of our spiritual lives and our children as well i remember when pastor dan used to put on the alpha program that would bring oh, yeah. in and ruth used to cook and serve all those meals just tirelessly. It's just and would bring in visitors and teach and you know, we've always been a teaching church. Well, when Pepe Pastor Otto preached, you know, uh, I didn't know the Lord, you know, when I came to church and often I thought he was speaking right to me. How does he know that? Often, you know, I had to compose myself, you know, 
not to start crying. Sometimes I did cry and the messages touched my heart, you know, and knew that I was a sinner. I needed forgiveness and I needed Jesus. In 2007, after a pastor search led by the elders, Christian Fellowship Church called Lucas O'Neill to be their next senior pastor. Lucas, his wife Tina, and their two young children moved into the parsonage and began serving at CFC on April 15, 2007. Pastor Lucas has been serving at CFC ever since, almost 17 years. Back in 2006, CFC found itself in a situation that we had never found ourselves in before, and that was having to find a new pastor. What we ended up doing was we put together a pastoral search committee. Uh, it was composed of the elders and several members, including young, old, male, female. We wanted a, a nice, diverse group to help in this decision. And we ended up getting a substantial amount uh, of applications. I was actually quite shocked at the volume of applicants that we received. We did Three, we interviewed three, possibly four people. Ultimately, we landed on Lucas and Tina, and I think we did a fantastic job. Well done. I was a full-time student at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, wrapping up my master's there. Uh, we had two kids and we were praying about what was next. We knew school was gonna be coming to an end. I believe you found a post online yes i think church that this staffing. church was looking for mm -hmm. a pastor yes i had never heard of itasca but had you no okay i've right. lived in chicago my whole life never heard of itasca <laughs> didn't even know where it was we had to look it up yeah um, but i i sent an application out august of 2006 we didn't hear anything until january i believe January of 2007. It was a long time. We it didn't think we were going to be getting a call we back. Had for, we had put it out of our minds. And we yeah. just, I figured no callback means mm -hmm. they threw my resume right in the trash, I suppose. I don't know. Right. After you had had a succession of interviews and preached, and then we hadn't heard again. It had been a couple weeks. And then I was like, why don't you call and see if there's an update? Follow up. Right. On whether or not they want to hire you. So I made you. the phone call to the whatever the number was that I had. Right. And the person that picked up, who was on the search committee, said, oh no, we decided to go in a different direction. Yeah. So I hung up and told Tina. And she was sad, maybe a little upset that I was, we weren't told that we were out of the running. I was definitely disappointed, but it was more like, God, how could you not see how perfect this is? Like, why would you just shut this, don't, you know, shut this down? Um, but then I like immediately felt convicted and you know, Lord, I don't want this if this is not where you want our family Like I, I want to be where you place us. So I think m Minutes later that person called you back and was like, wait, who are you again? <laughs> like I think I right. I, we had the wrong guy, the wrong name. We thought you were someone else. No, we do right. want you to come back and, right. and, and talk with us more so and The church voted and if I remember it was unanimous. Yeah, I think um, so. Eventually in the end uh, to, to, to call me and um, went from there. But that's how we started here 16 years ago. The seniors, I mean, off the bat, were just very accommodating, flexible. They didn't have a tight grip and ownership of how they want things to be. I think the seniors are one of the most commendable things about the church where immediately right off the bat, they were want, wanting the next generation to sort of take ownership of the church and, and move the church forward. And so you can't say that about right. probably most uh, yeah. churches that are, were in this situation, you know, size-wise, age-wise, history-wise. Uh, to find that I think was real special. I can only thank the Lord for letting me be a member of this faithful church and for giving us a good leading pastor who brings us a great message every Sunday and for Tina and his wife who leads the Sunday school very faithfully. One thing I really appreciate about CFC is being able to ask Lucas questions and learn from him. When we got married we started going to my church and a series of events we decided to make a change 
and we would visit and I always had something to complain about and uh you but pull the, Lucas aside and well he <laughs> so one day he said hey can I come and have lunch with you and he came over to my office and to make a long story short he said basically stop um dating this church make a decision you can't always find something wrong and then keep coming back and what why that was important to me was accountability um, i believe that it's easy for us always to have the easy conversations but he he had that hard conversation to say man it's time to make a decision and then i knew from that knowing that that faithfulness to um, Accountability also is a huge thing, and uh, so I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Having a strong um, pastor elder is really important, and we are blessed to have a man who is committed to um, God's Word. We're celebrating those 50 years, and he's been here, I think, 16 years, so I know there's, you know, Pastor Dan before him obviously made the same impact. I just didn't get to experience it, but I do believe we couldn't. Um, we couldn't be the church we are without both of those men and the mm -hmm. endless energy that um, they and their families contribute. We're blessed to have a church for 50 years with only two pastors and yeah. their families and the commitment from their families. Let's not forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's been amazing. In recent years, CFC has continued to grow and serve in the same building purchased by the church all the way back in 1973. God has been incredibly faithful to our congregation throughout these first 50 years, bringing many people to repentance and new life in Christ, and seeing only two senior pastors minister faithfully to the flock. While CFC has grown and changed in many ways over the course of 50 years, the church's commitment to preaching the gospel, teaching God's word, and fellowshipping with one another as one big church family has never wavered. CFC is where I learned to love the Lord and it's, it's where the gospel became real for me. It's where I learned to serve. It's where Tammy and I got married. It's where we dedicated our girls. And it's necessary. You know, we live in a world that just seems to be getting darker by the day, and it needs light. Uh, churches that preach the gospel unapologetically are hard to find. The thing I like most about uh, Christian Fellowship Church is its commitment to the gospel. I appreciate CFC's community and how everybody encourages each other to grow in our relationships with God. I really appreciate at CFC um, just the desire to know um, God's word and for everybody in the congregation to um, know the truth of God's word and understand it correctly and disciple. I'm super grateful to have this church and everyone in this church because I'm super close to them. They're very kind and giving and um, I'm sure they're thankful to have everyone else in the church too. I appreciate the members of CFC. Uh, everyone at CFC loves the Lord genuinely and loves each other. I appreciate that CFC is a church that has fellowship in it. Uh, it's welcoming and the sermons are biblical. The members are all there together and happy to be there. Everyone is hanging out after church and I, it's, a, it's a lovely place to be. One thing I've always appreciated about CFC is uh, the strong community here, the, the fellowship of brothers and sisters who, who love Christ and are always pushing each other to, to grow in Him. One thing I appreciate about CFC is that all the teaching is Christ-centered and I'm very thankful for the fellowship that we have here. What I appreciate more about CFC is the family and the community that I've been surrounded amongst. And then after church, we get together and we like ask questions with those we talk among each other which improve us in our knowledge in the Bible and improve us in our works too. People's desire to learn God's Word just at such a deeper level than any other church I've ever been to and not putting any church down I'm just saying that commitment and desire not just by the pastor but by the elders and then by everyone that goes to the church. It's just been amazing. This is desire to learn God's Word. When you have a, a very old church that has people that have been here since the founding of the church, that slow commitment to um, including people, to be warm to visitors, to try to include them, to get to know them, and I think that's a, 
a real blessing. What I really appreciate about CFC is the legacy that is in this church. Like take my family example, the Schultzes, you know. My grandmother, Renata Schultz, she and her husband and their children, they started coming here since the 1970s. And even though I did not grow up here, I still ended up being here and I can benefit from that legacy. Or take a couple more families, for example, the Hortlofts or the Solo Ways, you know, if you spend the time to listen to their stories, you'll see that there's this continuation, this almost rite of passage almost of like, ah, yes, you know, now you're being part of the CFC family almost. And I really like that because I think it's a testament of God's faithfulness, but also as a reassurance to people who might be visiting this church, like, hey, you know, there's some, there's a really solid foundation here. There are people who are in this for the long run. And I think that is desperately in short supply in today's fast culture. And yeah, I think that is something that is very special about CFC. And I just hope that the people who will walk into these doors will appreciate that and, you know, be ever so drawn to the love of God. Hello, Christian Fellowship Church. Happy 50th anniversary. And of course, many, many more. When I think about continuing the next years, two things come to mind. Um, stay in the word as Pastor Lucas does already and keep on in prayer. That's one of the important things. I know my husband, he had a little booklet with all the names of the people from the groups and he would pray every day for a different group and for the worship service, for the children, for the youth group, English, uh, home Bible studies. And it's humbling for me to see as the church grows, as it continues on, as it even serves the third generation. And I wish you all God's blessings for the next few years. We look forward with excited expectation to see how God will continue to work in and through Christian Fellowship Church over the next 50 years.